Hello and welcome to our Year 1 Information Evening. My name is Mrs Brayshaw, I'm the OWL class teacher. In Year 1 we also have Mrs Hunt and Mrs Housel who are our hedgehog team and Miss Mitchell who is our squirrels teacher. We also have a mixture of TAs helping us in our classroom, usually in the morning but we do have some support in the afternoon which we share often between our classes. So, lots to tell you today so I'm going to get myself on. Your child will have been learning from the early years foundation stage curriculum in reception and now we'll be moving on to the national curriculum where we have English and maths as our main lessons but we also teach across a themed approach where we teach all these other subjects as well covering RE, music, PSHE, computing, PE, geography, design and technology or DT, science, art and design and history. And what we do with these topics is we split them up across the year so we don't teach them all in one unit because that would be very overwhelming for the children. So what we tend to do is if we're teaching something like art and design in one half term, then next half term we'll teach design and technology and we'll swap them around as to which fits into our topic overviews most nicely. And I'll talk a bit more about those later on in our... And now on to some general information. In year one, we have a change of daily structure, so we no longer have the choosing for the children as they have been used to in their free play in reception. We have a much more formal style within our year one classes. So we often split our time between the carpet and working at tables. We use lots of equipment and lots of manipulatives to make our learning as interactive as we can as we go through our day. Lots of brain breaks and switching between that and our focus learning. Um, some of the other things we would like to mention is please bring the planners and the reading books every day. We try and read with the children during the week, so it really helps us if they've got their planners and their reading books in their bag every day. We change the children's books on a Monday. On a Monday, your child will get two new books. Um, sometimes the children request to keep their books for a little bit longer if they haven't quite read, finished reading them. That is absolutely fine. And again, if you find there's a, a book that your child really isn't getting on with, we can sometimes switch those out as well. Um, each week you'll notice in the planner there is a new what we call insert. Now this is an overview of the, inf overview of the learning that we'll be doing in the coming week covering our English and our maths lessons, you will often find that there's other bits of information in there as well. For example, this week we have asked for emails to our year one email address of the children when they were babies as part of our history learning. So little notifications like that often will be on our insert as well. You'll also find your child's spellings for the next week. You might have noticed what we do with the insert on a Monday morning when we do our little spelling quiz is the children write their spellings onto their insert before we stick it into their book. Um, that way you can see the ones that we've, we've done in class and the new ones are on there ready for next week. Uh, we encourage you to practice anyway, like scrap bits of paper, post-it notes, one letter on each post-it note, in the bath with bath crayons outside painting with water, in paint, whatever you can do to make it a little bit fun and whatever works for your family and your children. Again, come and see us if you want any further ideas on that. We've got a little bank of ideas if you're really struggling. Um, in your reading record and planner, we change the books, we write down the new books. It would really help us if you do any reading at home with your ch children, if you could record that in your books as well and sign the planner just to let us know how they're going on. Any little comments for us are really helpful. So things like, oh, they've really enjoyed this book, but they really struggled with the word are. Oh. Things like that are really helpful for us to know because then we can input that into our main teaching and recap some of those words or sound with your children. We send home end of year expectation booklets. We do this at Christmas and at Easter. And in these end of year expectation booklets are the expectations from the national curriculum for year one. Um, we highlight the ones that your child has achieved so far. Now at Christmas, we haven't covered the whole curriculum. So don't worry if there aren't so many highlighted because as I say, it's only, we've only had a small part of our year. So we won't have covered all of the objectives, but do keep in touch with your teacher if you've got any concerns. General information, so again a little bit more about that. We are outside every morning. Please do check in with us if you've got any questions, queries, concerns. Please do just pop and see us. We're 
often there in the morning if we're not outside our TAs are outside and if for any reason that we bobs inside and um, maybe sometimes we have to go and usher a child in or help the children take their coat off if they're having a bit of a, a sad day do please speak to the other teachers or, or wait a moment and we will do our best to answer your questions answer your queries we are friendly I promise um, please do also check the weekly newsletter. Mrs. Anderson puts lots of work into our weekly newsletter and there's lots and lots of information in there. So that's a good first port of call. If you have got a question or query or you want to know when something's happening, that's a really good place to look. Another really good place to look is our website. I've popped some links later in our slides. We put lots of information on our website, but we also have our own class pages. And on our class pages, we put lots of updated photos. We've just put some on of the learning over the first couple of weeks. And that will also cover your PE days, the teachers in your class, and um, other bits and pieces that are really useful. So that's something that's really useful to check out every few weeks or so as well. Uh, we also request that you, your child has named weather appropriate PE kit in school as we try and get outside when we can. So it's really helpful if they've got a jumper or some joggers, especially as the weather in the winter is a little chillier. Um, talking of PE, we would also request please that long hair to be tied up on PE day. So long hair we think of as anything other than shoulder, anything longer than shoulder length. Um, I myself have about shoulder length hair and I pull my hair off my face ready for PE days just so that we can be really nice and safe and see really well as we're moving around either the hall or the playground and again for safety request that all jewellery be removed that would really help us out keep us nice and safe. PE days are just there for you, hedgehogs are usually on a Monday, owls usually on a Tuesday, squirrels usually on a Wednesday, that's when our PE slots are, sometimes we have to chop and change if we've got visitors or if we've got a really nice day, sometimes we do have to swap those around a little bit, usually our PE lessons will be on hedgehogs Monday, owls Tuesday and squirrels on a Wednesday. Things that we might need in our time in year one, we request that the children have book bars that can fit on their pegs or in their drawers. Some of our classes don't have a huge amount of space on their pegs and so we often ask the children to put their books in their drawers. These ones in pictured are ideal, they're a good size to fit in our drawer. If they could also be able to fit an A4 sheet, please don't feel that you need an open school bag. We just need them to be small enough to go in their drawers and to have an A4 sheet. Uh, we often send home bits of work, things that we've done covered in our lessons. Um, water bottles, if your child could have a water bottle every day, that would really help. Again, it would really help if they were labelled as well, just helps us with handing them out. We do aim to send them home at the end of every day so they can be rinsed out, ready for the next day. But if you find your child doesn't come out with them, they're usually just in the classroom and we can always wash them out in the morning. Planner, as I've said, please bring your planners every day. Um, uh, while I'm on that subject, it really helps us out if at the front of your planner, if you've got somebody that picks up on a regular basis, it's really helpful for us to know, say for example, grandma always picks up on a Tuesday, that really helps our staff out to know that it's a regular person, but also if there's a supply in there for any reason, can really help them out as well. So that's a, a little tip for it to help us all out. Um, coats, please can you remember to bring a coat daily, pack in a pack a mac or cag in a bag is really handy in your child's bag just in case it rains as we try and get the children out between their lessons at playtimes as much as possible a little bit of drizzle, drizzle we get try and get them out if they've got a coat that's really really helpful if your child needs lip balm that's absolutely fine but please can you ensure that they give their lip balm to their member of staff in their classroom to keep on the desk at the front but that's just for the children's hygiene we don't want them to be sharing things like that in the cloakroom thank you very much my final slide final point on this slide is to do with extras we ask that any toys cars uh, cards um, like Pokemon cards, anything, anything of that description is please kept at home and um, if they're brought into school there are chances that they'll get lost or damaged or broken and that leads to upset children, that's something that we really don't want to happen. So if you've got something special that you would like to send, please send a picture of it to the SCAT year one email address and let your teacher know and then we can show the children on the big board and that way everybody can see as well. Super. Super helpful, thank you. 
Next, on to our daily routine. This daily routine is subject to change, but is a general example of the sorts of things we do each day. So we start the day with a morning job. That's usually a job that is linked to our previous learning. For example, on a Monday, the children will have their spellings and they'll get an extra chance to practice their spellings. Other jobs we do are maths, sometimes linked to our previous learning in the week. So if we've been learning about counting in twos, we might get the children to count in twos. Again, it can be linked to our phonics, again, linked to the learning that we've done in the week. So it's an independent job for them to be getting on with whilst we do the register first thing in the morning. Then we usually move on to our phonics session. We have supersonic phonics, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Then we'll do English. We'll have our snack. Please feel free to send in a snack, especially if you're, you know your child. It's a little fussier. We get different snack each day. We often have a variety of snacks, so we always have something interesting. But if you know that your child particularly likes bananas or apples, you're more than welcome to send one of those in for them to have at this time. We also have our milk. You might know that the children have cool milk, which until they are five is supplied for free. But when they turn five after their fifth birthday, it is no longer free, unfortunately. But we are happy to provide it. If you go to the cool milk website, you can pay for the school milk's very small fee. And then we can give them milk at snack time. And that tends to keep them a little bit fuller for lunchtime as well. Then we have playtime outside in our big play big playground where you arrive in the morning. After playtime, the children get on with their maths and our guided reading before lunch. The children sit inside our hall to eat and then they go for outdoor play, again in our L-shaped playground where you arrive in the morning. After lunchtime, we usually have a quick maths mastery session and our maths mastery is some quick recall facts. We often work on things like number bonds to five, number bonds to ten, to really embed those early skills of maths and get their recall facts, which are, you know, instant things like a number bonds. I know that two and three make five. I'll talk a little bit more about those as we go along. It's a quick session to boost those skills and really get those good foundations in for maths. Then we have our topic session at playtime. Uh, sometimes another topic session and an assembly, finally finishing with story time. So we do have a very busy day. Next, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about phonics. There is another video that goes into this a little deeper um, from our lovely phonics lead, Mrs. PB. But just to cover the things that we are teaching in year one, the first thing we do is a recap of our phase four skills, which, are to, which the children will have covered at the end of reception. Just to again boost those skills, phase four covers their blending for reading and segmentation for spelling. So blending for reading is when we sound out a word and blend it together like at cat and uh, segmenting for spelling is when we have a word we know what we want to write if we want to write the word tent we've got to sound out and tent and these focus on con consonant vowel consonant consonant words like tent and consonant consonant vowel consonant words like from we also learn two syllable words like handstand which looks and sounds like a complicated word word but we teach the children that we can split it down into two syllables or two parts and then we can sound out each part of the word and they're very surprised when they can write these lovely long words we also practice writing captions and sentences. You'll see those at the bottom of our parent newsletter, which I'll talk a little bit about in a moment. As we move through year one, we then move on to phase five, which comes in some several parts. Phase five focuses on the alternate spellings and pronunciation. So one phoneme or grapheme can have lots of different so one phoneme, one sound can have lots of different graphemes and a grapheme is a way of spelling a sound. So, for example, you'll see on the left hand side of the screen, we've got the words that match the A sound. So we've got rain. The AI grapheme is a grapheme that they learn in reception. In phase five, we also learn that AY can make an A sound at the end of words like in day. And there's also what we call a split diagraph. You might have once called it a magic E. We tend to use the correct terminology with the children. Once we explain it, we give them a good understanding of what the terminology is around the sounds. We look at the word make, the A and the E together are making the A sound. We often demonstrate this by getting children up to the front, holding hands over the top of another letter and the K 
in between makes the k sound. So we've got n, a, k. And then we teach the children that the A and the E together hold hands and make that A sound. And then later on in phase five, we also look at different pronunciations. So on the right hand side of the screen, we've got head, beach and break, which all have an E and an A, which make an F sound in head, a E sound in beach and an A sound in break. So it sounds like a lot, but we approach it in very small steps. And this is much of our learning across our year one. On to tricky and common exception words. From the basics to you, children also learn tricky words which don't fit into the most common grapheme phoneme pattern of the English language. Some of them will do later on. For example, when we teach her, 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 uh, once we know the er sound makes absolute sense, but until they know that er makes er, it doesn't make sense. So as we progress, some of these words do become decodable, but we teach them as because they are common, they often come up, we teach them as tricky words to start off with. The year one common exception words are the words that are in our national curriculum and they're often words that are exceptions to the rule and we teach these alongside our phonics and our tricky words. Home reading. In an endeavour to make our reading accessible for all children, the books that they bring home will be at the level they are secure with reading. So they are designed to be a nice easy read for your child. The way that phonics, the way that reading has changed is in previous years, you might have found older children coming home with books that they were finding quite tricky. We want the children to be really comfortable and happy with what they're, le what they're reading and they know the sounds in the book. So if they're not confident with reading a word, they can, they've got the confidence, they've got the skills to split that word down and then blend it back together. Home reading is an opportunity to practice their blending and segmenting skills, so breaking down those words and building them back up together. And we recommend children read a book three times during the week. So we have a first read that we encourage them to break down those words, sound them out, and the second and third reads are building that fluency and building that confidence. Again, don't feel like you need to stick to those books, but it's a really useful thing to do to read them again and again just to really build that confidence really build those skills we change the books on a monday for this reason and your child will have two new books for the coming week please make sure that reading records are signed so we can keep track of the children's reading in year one we will be doing a phonics check now this is nothing to worry about it is something that is an expectation of the year one national curriculum it contains pseudo words, which are nonsense words, not real words. We often call these alien words in school, and you'll see some of these below. This is a sample and example from the Year One Phonics screening check. So the alien words or pseudo words have little aliens next to them. And often when we sit and do the, the check, we explain that these are the aliens and these are their nonsense words. In our phonics lessons, we practice reading these words with the help of Nonsense Nan, one of our lovely phonic, supersonic phonic friends characters. And you might hear your child saying, absolute nonsense. Because if we read one of these words and it's a Nonsense Nan word, it's a nonsense word. So they might sound out pim, p, i, m, pim, absolute nonsense. That's not a real word. And so we're practicing those skills all the time. The year one phonics screening check will be done by an adult that is familiar to your child and will be done in June. There is a pass mark which we will let you know nearer the time. It changes or they say it will change each year. And uh, as I say, nothing to worry about. All that happens is that if they don't reach the pass mark, they will get extra support in year two with their phonics right at the beginning. And then they'll retake the test at the end of year two, just to again assess their phonic knowledge. It's a little assessment to help us with our assessments and us with our knowledge of the children. Um, nothing to worry about. And as I say, we don't make it into an issue at school. The children actually really enjoy doing it. They love the pictures of the aliens. Here is an example of your parent newsletters. These have come with our Supersonic Phonic Friends program and are really useful. We send them home on a Monday. You'll see this box here 
has got the previous graphemes, so the spellings of the sounds that they already know. And when we are introducing new sounds, they will appear at the bottom. So it's really helpful to practice these to support your child's recognition. So one example of a way you could use these sheets is your child is feeling really tired and they're not really ready to read their book at this time. Grab your supersonic phonic friends newsletter. Have a look at these previous sounds. Oh, can you tell me some of these sounds? Nice, quick, two or three minutes. And that's a bit of work that will help them with their reading. The next section has got our Tess's tricky words. As I mentioned earlier, these include the ones that we've taught so far and the ones at the bottom will be the ones that we are learning this week. Practicing these will also help support your child's reading. Slightly further down the sheet, we've got this section which shows the words that the children are learning this week in their phonics. So again, that's a good thing to pick up maybe halfway through the week towards the end of the week and see if your child can remember some of these words. Use those blending and segmenting skills and really practice their phonics. Some sentences and captions at the bottom as well. They're really feeling keen. At the bottom, there are a couple of little challenges. Don't feel like you have to sit down and do these. Have a quick look at them. These can be a fun activity in the car. They can be on the way to school, all of those kind of things. There are lots and lots of tricky word songs out there as well. If your child would like to have a look, there's a tricky words songs. And just I've put the links in here. I'm afraid they won't link through the video. Uh, but if you look on YouTube and search the tricky word song, phase three phonics, phase four phonics, phase five phonics, when we get there later in the year, there are some really good little songs there. Two or three minutes. Again, that's a good way of helping building your child's reading skills as well. In year one, we read in the school all the time. We do individual reading. That will be with the either with the teacher, the teaching assistant, and we have lots of lovely volunteer readers. If you would like to become a volunteer reader, we love having people in to listen to our children read, help us with various other bits and pieces. Please do let your teacher know. There's a CRB check that you will have to fill in, but please do come and help us. It's such a lovely thing to do. We also do guided reading whole class reading so we work as a whole class and that focuses deep in on the comprehension and the understanding of the text and um, we also read in our phonics lessons we read our new words we read sentences and our spellings will link to the sounds that we are teaching within our phonics lessons the structure of our guided reading sessions we do 30 minutes three times a week each one is split into three parts the fantastic focus is look at feelings actions the stylistics focus on the problems, the characters, a bit more in depth of what's going on in the story. And our analytics focus on our opinions and our deeper understanding of what's happening in the story. Here's an example of some of the questions. What we do is we look at a bit of text together, so a page or a couple of pages of the story, and then we will ask the children some sentence starter questions. So we look at this one, this is at the end of the road, mum and dad walking down the road with their child. In the picture, mum, dad and the children are, and then we'll have a discussion, talk about what they're doing in the book. The setting of the story, so we will use words like setting and we'll explain that's where the story happens and we'll look at different settings and different stories. And then finally, we'll do a prediction, what we think will happen next. So we're really looking here deep into the book, what is happening and the children's understanding of what they have read. Some ideas for sharing books at home. Reading should be fun. Please don't feel like you re need to read the whole of each book every night. If you can, your child can manage a couple of pages, that's fantastic. Make it fun. Do it when it when works for you. If that's straight after school, great. If that's first thing in the morning, that's fine. Please do whatever works for you. Choose your moment. A couple of pages at a time is absolutely fine. Some other good things to do as you're reading, talk about what sort of book is it? Is it a story? Is it a fiction book? Is it an information text? Is it a non-fiction books? How do you know? These are sorts of things that we talk about in our guiding reading as well. Um, encourage your child to use their following finger so that they're looking really carefully at each of the words and signing them out carefully, making sure that also that if they've sounded out a word, they sounded out a word, they do blend it together so they do get that understanding of what the word said so it doesn't become just a robotic, robotic habit of sounding out the word and not understanding what the word says. Um, support your child with the blending process. So sometimes we might 
jump the sounds or clap the sounds or use our phonics finger. Our bossy phonics finger is what we use in our phonics lesson. So if we're sounding out a word like k at, use our phonics finger k at and cat. And we can blend it together by moving our finger across our bodies. Please read a wide, wide range of books. Use Bug Club, which I'll talk about a little bit later. The library, I'm sure we've got lots of books at home as well. And I think there's still quite a lot of books online through things like Oxford Reading Tree. Again, exposing exposure to lots of different things is really good. Also, let your child see you read. Talk about what you read as well with your child because in them seeing you read is a really good way to inspire them to enjoy reading as well. Um, there are some questions in your planners on page 23 that you can also use to support your child's reading. Moving a little now on to writing in year one, we encourage the children to have correct letter formation. That's one of our big focuses. And we do this through our handwriting sessions each week, as well as in our day to day learning. One of the big things we work on in year one is writing sentences with a capital letter, finger spaces and a full stop. And then as the year goes by, we'll be starting to use question marks and exclamation marks. So really varying the punctuation ready for their learning in year two. And we encourage the children to use their phonic skills for their spelling. So at this point in the year, they don't know all the sounds. If they're using the sounds that they know, if they're spelling a word like I mentioned earlier, day, with AI at the moment, that's absolutely fine because they're using the phonics sounds that they know. As we progress through the year and our phonics knowledge include, in, improves, we will then start encouraging children to use the right sound in the right place in the world. Lots of the time there are rules for this, like the AY sound is usually at the end of the word, but the English language being what it is, unfortunately that doesn't happen every, every time. But where we can, we give the children as many tips as possible to really build their skills and their spelling. One of the things you might come across during this year is Wizard Writers. Wizard Writers is an intervention that we do in year one. Your child may be invited to become a wizard, wizard writer. And in these sessions, we work on using those key skills, writing sentences with a capital letter, finger spaces and full stops, as well as working on their correct letter formation. It's a booster session, nothing to worry about. We found it's a really effective way of giving our child a little bit of a boost if they're finding things a bit tricky and really, really helps with their confidence. So please don't worry. Again, speak to us if you've got any worries. We are here to help. Other good tips here is some examples of how to write letters and how to hold our pencil. We use nip, flip and grip. Here's an example of a good pencil grip. It's one of the things that we'll be focusing on over these first few weeks in year one. We always start our letters with a leading line and an extra stroke that's ready for moving towards joining. Uh, we start all of our letters on the line and that's really useful because all of the letters start from the, the, from the right place, from the same place on the line. And that's a really useful skill for all children to have. And we found there is research that goes to show that that is good for children with dyslexia. Not that that's something that we would be looking at just at the moment, something that is something that comes out when they're a little bit older, but it is something that we are often aware of. But it is something that we one of the reasons that we teach it from so young is because it's really good for lots of things. Um, we move towards joining when the children are ready. So we teach them as we go through, as we cover each of the letters in the precursive style, we cover how to join the letters. And when your children, child or children are ready, we encourage them to start joining as they move towards year two, not just yet. But as we say, we work on a case by case basis. When your child's ready is what's best for them. The way we teach our English is called the right stuff, which is a style of teaching that makes the mechanics of writing easier for children to learn. We start off with lots of discussion about what's happened in the book, what's happened in a certain area in the book. For example, today we were working on the book, The Smeds and the Smooths. And there's a part where the, some of the smooths are in the river. And today we created a word bank of what they were doing. They were splashing, they were squirting. They were jumping and we were using this as a bank of verbs and we'll write those all down together. Then the children will scribe those into their books. We then model a sentence. So this mentioned smooths were squirting, 
splashing in the pond. And then the children will build on this and write their own independent sentences. We work on this for several days and then at the end we do plan, write and edit a longer piece of writing. So sometimes that's a story, sometimes that's a piece of non-fiction writing. And as we go through our rights of learning, we do experience days. So you may have seen your child has come home already with a smed or a smooth drawing and some words around the edge, which is building again our ideas. We do lots of different things. Sometimes it's a dance activity. Sometimes it's a colouring activity to really open the children up and develop their ideas. Working now with maths, maths mastery in year one. So in our maths, we work on three themes. The concrete, where children have the opportunity to use concrete objects and manipulatives to help them understand what they're doing. And I'll show you some of these in a minute. We use lots of different things, counters, number lines, what we call base 10 or deans. We use money when we get some money. We try and make it as hands-on as we can. Once we've done our hands-on learning, which we do at the start of the lesson, we move on to pictorial learning. So we use pictures like this bar model here, which shows that the whole number is 150. Not a number that we would work on year one, but just happens to be in this example. And that part of the number, that yellow part there, is 55. And the children would have to work out what the other part of the number is. I will explain a little bit further later how we split up numbers into parts and holes. And that helps us with our addition and subtraction. We then move on to the abstract where we write down those number facts as for add two equals six and it becomes a little bit more of an abstract con concept. A typical maths lesson in year one looks like this. We start off with what we call flashback four, which is four questions that recap previous learning, previous lessons learning. So the top question usually works on our learning from yesterday. We have a question on our learning from last week, often a question from our learning from last term, just to keep all of that learning fresh in our brain and keep ourselves practicing. We often say practice makes perfect. Then we start our lesson by practicing our instant recall facts. So that can be things like at the moment we're doing lots of practicing counting forwards and backwards to 10. We'll move on to counting twos, counting fives and other number facts like one more than this number, one less than this number, 10 more, 10 less as we go through our learning in year one. Next, we use a stem sentence just as we would in our guided reading to give children confidence to speak about their learning. So it can be today we are learning how to count in twos. Today we are learning how to find one more than a number. And so we really lay those foundations. And again, it gives the children those skills to talk about their learning. We then have a focus part of our lesson, which is often a practical part. Sometimes our let's, that continues in our let's practice. In focus, we look at what we're learning that day. Let's practice, we get our equipment out, we practice together. We sometimes practice our learning and how we're going to lay it out on the board together as well. The children would then do some independent work and some problem solving. Again, sometimes we start off with the problem solving, doing lots of talking, using our stem sentences, and then the children will be writing their ideas down as we move through the year. We also have chili challenges available, which are just that, an extra challenge. They are three challenge. We have a mild challenge, which is easy, a spicy challenge and a hot challenge. And these are just themed with chili peppers to give children that extra challenge as and where they need it. Instant recall facts. I've talked a lot about these. So some of these include counting two and across 100 forwards and backwards from any number. So that sounds like one big thing, but we break it down into small parts. So counting to 100, counting beyond 100, counting forwards, counting backwards, and then we start, so we'll start counting at 70, start counting at 74, start counting backwards at 74, all of those kind of things to build the children's understanding of number. One more and one less of a number up to 100. Counting in multiples of two, so two, four, six, eight, ten, fives, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and tens, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. 
One of the other things that we teach the children how to do is know their number bonds to 10. So I know that 10 and 0 makes 10. I know that 1 and 9 makes 10. I know that 2 and 8 makes 10. And then we use number bonds and related subtraction facts within 20. So one of the things that the children are expected to do is to be able to recall and use those number facts to help them within their learning. Some of the things that we use in year one, we've got a tens frame just here. You can see in the photograph the children using some cubes to show five on a ten frame. On my ten frame with my red and yellow counters on the bottom right, I am showing the number six, which is made of five and one. So we can use that to support our learning and say that five and one make six. We can learn that we can also use that. We use the physical objects, as you'll see in the photo, to say that six Takeaway one is five. We also use them to represent larger numbers. So we'll have full 10 frames. Two full 10 frames is 20. Three full 10 frames is 30. And that's another representation we're often using in our learning. You'll see here there's a number track which shows the digit numbers and the word numbers as well as the dot representations. We've been using those lots over the last. You'll see on this slide, we've got our base 10 or Dean's cube, and that's the blue lines and spots you'll see. In the left-hand picture, you'll see that we use these as physical objects as well. You can see in the photograph that they are showing the number 13, I think, possibly 14. I think they've got one in their hand, which shows by 110, which is the long stick, and three ones to show 13, four of them making 14. And then you can see they're recording that on a tens and ones chart. So we split our number up saying that 10 and 4 make 14. Um, Miss Mitchell was telling us today she calls them fish fingers and peas, long fish fingers, small peas or tens and ones. We use the vocabulary, vocabulary tens and ones to show that numbers are made up of tens and ones. Units we use when we're looking at measure. So a unit of measure being centimetres or metres. You'll also see on the right hand side of the screen what we call a part part whole model. Now in the photograph, the children have got their whole, which is nine, and they know that part of that number is three. So what they will do is they will put three cubes on top of the three of their nine cubes. They will then know how many are left over to make that nine. Another way we use our part whole models is we might have a number like 42 in the whole. 42 is the whole number that can be split into four tens and two ones. So that's another concept that we'll work on later in the year, giving that the children a really good understanding of number, how it's made, what it looks like and what it can be split or partitioned into. Some of the other things we use as our mass ma manipulatives, we've got our Numicon picture just there. We sometimes call these number tiles where each number is a different color and a different shape. You can see that the odd numbers have an extra part onto them and that's also some of our learning that we help the children to learn about odd numbers. On the bottom left of the screen, you will see what we call a wreck and wreck. Now we have physical wreck and wrecks with beads on so they can move the beads from either side. We often use these in our math mastery sessions. For example, today we were looking at the number five and how the number five is made up. On the wreck and wreck here, you can see the beads on the left hand side are making the number five. We said that there are two on the top, there are three on the bottom, two and three make five. Or I have five beads, two on the top, three on the bottom, two and three make five. So we use lots of these stem sentences to help us with our learning. On the right hand side, you'll see 100 square. As we move on to the larger numbers later in the year, we'll be working with numbers up to 100 and we teach the children lots of things of how to use their 100 square. That can help us lots with finding 10 more, 10 less, one more, one less. You will have seen we have sent out a newsletter covering the learning that we will be doing in autumn one. Each half term we send out a newsletter with all the learning that we're doing, including maths, English and our topic lessons. Really interesting to see what we'll be covering. But also, if you see something on there that you think, oh, that's right at my street, that in fact, I work in that area and you would like to come in and share some of the things that you do or some experience that you've got, any artefacts, please do come and speak to us. We would welcome you to come and 
sit with the children or if you want to show them some things that you have, that would be really appreciated. We've had people come in before to talk about animals, to talk about dances. We've had some singers in. Any little skills that you've got, please do come and see us. Um, you'll also see that your child class has a class page as hedgehogs and squirrels and you'll find them under the children's section class pages as i mentioned earlier we like to put photos up there there's lots of information in there there are also some powerpoints and videos about our handwriting giving some models of how to form each letter which might be really useful for you um, this is an overview of our themed topic. So our topic at the moment is called This Is Me. So we'll be learning things about our, ourselves, our human body. Um, we'll be learning about self-portraits in art, for example. In Autumn 2, our topic is Toy Story, which is mainly focused about toys. Lots of history in there. We look at the history of toys and we link some of our English to that as well. In spring, we look at fur, feather and fins, which is all about animals, a big focus on animals in that section. What a Wonderful World goes on to look at different parts of the world, different continents, the seas. How Does Your Garden Grow focuses on plants, gardens, and then our final topic of the year, Come on England, focuses on the UK. So we cover lots of things in each topic. That's just a general idea. For more information on what we cover in each topic, please look at our curriculum pages. Um, in our topic lessons, we try and cover lots of practical aspects. For example, this week in our science lessons, we've been exploring our senses so we've been smelling things we've been using magnifying glasses to look at things we've been tasting things we've been exp exploring our hearing and our touch through feely bags and noise tubes our motto is nurtured and inspired equals happy so we like to provide practical activities for the children especially in these sessions any questions please do catch your class teacher or drop us an email to the office and we'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions please do come and see us here are some useful websites that you might find helpful across the year phonics play has got lots of phonics games lots of phonics recall and um, bug club is our reading books online the teachers have recently updated this and put on some new books for your children. Unfortunately, as we did this, we've had a look and checked our passwords, which unfortunately are no longer working. So we have updated your children's password and in the coming week, we will stick their stickers into their planners so that the new login details are there for you. Please do learn, use those. Numbots is something that we'll be relaunching this term. It is an interactive math games where your child has a robot and as they play games they earn points and that will unlock more aspects, more features of your robot. The children love this. It's a really good way to practice their basic number skills and they really enjoy playing the games as well. Top Marks is an interactive whiteboard activities that we use in class that can be used at home as well. Lots and lots of different things there covering all the subjects, loads and loads of fun games. Super Movers is run by the BBC and that has songs and dances, sometimes with uh, mascots from the football. We use lots of the maths ones, county and twos, county and fives, county and tens, but there are all sorts on there. There's English ones and reading ones as well. Another good website to check out is the Bart Size Key Stage 1 England. There's lots of videos and interactive activities on there as well. Again, please, I know I've said this a lot, please do come and speak to us if you've got any questions, any queries or any ideas, if you would like to share any of your things with us. Thank you so much for your listening. And I will hopefully see you soon. Thank you so much.